So what we can do is use autoarema to effectively run a regression between our predictor variable and our uh, observations, and also fit this, these ARIMA models to the residuals left over from that relationship. And so let's do that. Let's do a simple example. I'll call it the rain ARIMA. And we'll call the forecast function and auto ARIMA again. And we'll give it our NDVI time series object. We will again tell it to do a max p equal three. And now we'll add the argument x reg. x reg is basically, uh, these are the x values that I want to do a regression with. And in this case, our x reg will be our rain time series object. We'll run this. Let's look at the output or summary rain arima. Run that. And what we see now is our regression model with ARIMA errors. So it has fit a regression between RAIN and NDVI and then pulled from those residuals. It is now fitting all of this autocorrelation structure on those residuals um, to soak up all of that additional information that's, that's in there. What we see is that there's the same structure that we had before with the AR2, the MA1, and the three annual cycles for the seasonal signal. We have an intercept, and now we have this x reg term, and that is the coefficient for this relationship between the NDVI and the precipitation. If we check the residuals on our rain arima model, oops, let me tag that with the forecast package, we don't see anything here that we haven't seen before. And for fun, let's compare this new pop model with the precipitation added in uh, to our auto ARIMA 3 model. So let's plot up NDVI time series object and then plot the lines for the that are fitted to the auto ARIMA underscore 3 model. And we'll color that green like we did before. And then we will also add lines for the fitted rain arima and we'll color that purple see what that does let's run these three lines of code including the rain as a predictor isn't having a huge effect on our fit of the model though the way we entered the rain into the model this is the precipitation that's occurring in this current month we could lag the precipitation and then recalculate the fit then that's possible, but this is where I'm going to end our tutorial for today. Next week, Ethan's going to pick up with showing you how to take these ARIMA models and actually use this autocorrelation structure to create forecasts for the future and how to uh, start thinking about the uncertainty that comes out of the models and then uh, how to think about evaluating things.